Hello and welcome to a TV44 special presentation. We're calling it Acts 44 Presents God Uses People to Accomplish Great Things. Have you ever stopped to think about how much the little things add up to mean big things in God's eyes? The kind words you share with a person at the store, offering to give a friend in need a ride to the doctor's appointment, taking the time to pray for someone that God is laying on your heart, volunteering with a ministry who fits your talents well. God uses everyday people like you and me to be His hands and feet. And now we bring you stories of just a few of those amazing people, people who are doing things every day to be God's hands and feet. And we start with a man named Tom Birch. For years, Tom worked for a reputable local company. The job was good, steady, reliable. But Tom and his son had a chance to make a difference in their hometown and they took it. Here's Andy Lynch with our first story of how God is using everyday, ordinary people to do extraordinary things. You know, we face challenges here every day, and there are things that, that don't go according to plan or um, not the way that we'd like them to be. And my emphasis lately has been on uh, giving thanks in all things and rejoicing in everything and praying without ceasing from 1 Thessalonians 5. And, and that's um, a challenge, you know, when these flies are buzzing around and, and or somebody calls in 13 minutes before their shift starts and you're thinking your natural reaction is not praise God or uh, giving thanks and yet that's what we're committing. Tom Birch and his son Matt purchased the Rockford carryout July the 1st, 2016. We had an opportunity here where we were raised to uh, by the business and to contribute back to the community in ways that we weren't able to do previous to that. And both of us were really excited about that opportunity. The father-son team started renovating the building, adding to the menu, and finding ways to be invested in the community of Rockford. Both of us were really excited about that opportunity to be able to get plugged back into Rockford to do things with uh, the school, with the local businesses and with the people of the community. The Rockford Carryout is a restaurant, a drive through a catering company, and a community cheerleader. But it's also a place of encouragement, hope, and inspiration. Both Tom and Matt believe that for them, this is more than just a daily job. What we're, we're called to do, we understand that uh, paying it forward is important and that we've benefited a lot from this community, the schools, and so for us to be able to, to give back in whatever way we can, um, not just to the community, but to the people and to people in general, that's, that's our mission. Um, as far as um, why we do it, and I think that's important because I always ask myself, what is your why? I mean, why are you doing what you do? And I think often we don't stop and, and analyze that, but why do we do it? And that's to give back. Um, to to try and run the operation with our employees. Um, people say we do it by the book. Well, the book is the Bible for us. Doing it by the book, the Bible. Every day Tom goes to work, he likely supervises many pizzas and other great food items being made. He provides work opportunities as well for local high school students. He looks for additional opportunities to connect with Rockford's downtown, the schools, and all the area businesses. But there's even more. There's a higher purpose. There's a reason for this daily existence, and it all comes back to Jesus. He, he didn't save us just for eternal life, but in order to live transformed lives here on this earth. And we have to, to be different, and we have to um, follow those the commands and the encouragement that we're given in Scripture to, to be transformed. And uh, we have that opportunity regardless of, of what occupation that we're dealing with. For Tom and Matt Birch, their occupation is food, and they believe they can use the food industry, specifically their restaurant, to be a witness for others. One of the ways that we've done that is um, through the sign out front where it's, it's a great day to have a great day, and people will say, why, why is that? You can turn about any discussion you want into one of a spiritual nature um, by planting the seeds and so as a missionary, I think whatever our occupation is, we have those opportunities. And if we seek those out and, and we, we are open in our spirit to those opportunities that they'll present themselves. And so 
There's everybody that we come into contact with, whether it's our employees or our customers, is dealing with something and generally we have no idea uh, what it is that they're struggling or dealing with. But if we're open and we take time to, to listen and our spirit's open to that, then uh, it'll be revealed and we'll have that opportunity to share, not just love, but uh, ultimately share Christ and that's why we're here. That's right, that's why we're here. We're here to make a difference in others' lives. Tom Birch is doing it every day, and so is Trish McKinney. It's been less than two years since Trish reached out to her pastor, Pastor Tim Benjamin, about a desire to be involved in some volunteering at Forest Park United Methodist Church. Neither Pastor Tim nor Trish could have predicted how God was going to lead her life. And not long ago, her efforts were recognized by the entire West Ohio United Methodist Conference. I have a heart for serving and I, that's what I feel like my calling is. Meet Trish McKinney, mother, aunt, full-time employee, friend to many, and now she adds a title no other layperson in Lima has been given before, recipient of the Harry Denman Award from the United Methodist Church. On a beautiful June day at Hoover Auditorium in Lakeside Marblehead, during the 49th session of the United Methodist Church West Ohio Conference, Trish took her seat in the front row, applauding as many churches and individuals before her were honored for achievements from the past year. And then, nearing the close of the awards session, Reverend Dr. Harley Roston of Piketon United Methodist Church and Trish McKinney of Forest Park United Methodist Church in Lima were invited to the stage. In a conference of 58 counties, only one clergy and one layperson is selected each year to receive the honor. This year's lay recipient is Trish McKinney from Lima Forest Park United Methodist Church in the Northwest Plains District. Trish McKinney is the missions chair at Forest Park United Methodist. While this church has been familiar to her since childhood, it's been less than two years since God got a hold of Trish's heart and mind in a new way. I first met Trish, uh, she was just coming through a, a rough season in life, some unfair things had happened and instead of letting it beat her, she decided to let it make her stronger. Uh, she stepped up to the plate and I really don't feel like I did a whole lot except say, hey, why don't we try this? And she ran after it with reckless abandon and it was just been great these last uh, year and a half to watch her grow. Growth for Trish meant first serving on the missions board, next becoming the missions chair, and then branching out further to use her talents in compassion, caring, and love for women in need, and to expand Forest Park's mission outreach in the Lima community. I told her as the chair I wanted her to pick uh, one pet project, and she was kind of debating on a few things, and I said, I got somebody I want to introduce you to. Uh, we went down and met Julianne Frankhauser down at Guiding Light, and then I pretty much got out of the way, and they took it from there and I volunteer there one or two days a week. And I go over there and just kind of do some work around the houses and you know, help the women get to appointments and basically just whatever they need. Serving people, being the hands and feet of Jesus, replicating the work of Harry Denman. Harry Denman was a, a historic figure in United Methodism that uh, was a great evangelist, brought many, many people to Christ. And uh, the, the uh, Council on Evangelism has set this award up for years, and it's a very prestigious award. Each conference in United Methodism is able to give out a clergy award and a lay award. And Trish won that award as the layperson for a work at Forest Park in Linebaum. Trish McKinney didn't volunteer to be recognized. She says the honor is special and she appreciates it, but it's the work she is doing in Lima that keeps her going and knowing God isn't finished with plans for her life. I think really what makes it worth doing is when they actually get on their feet and leave the Guiding Lighthouses and they still keep in touch with me and contact me and let me know how things are going in their life. As Harry Denman once said, Today, the only way we can see Christ is to see Him wrapped in a person. We need to become a package of love, a package of faith, a package of Christ. Then we will become a package of evangelism. Congratulations to this year's Henry Denman Evangelism Award recipients. Yes. So far, we've heard from Tom Birch, Trish McKinney, still to come, an amazing story about a family who's watching their son advance unexpectedly despite spina bifida. But first, what's on your bucket list? 
and do you think there's even a chance to see that bucket list item become reality? Well, today I want you to meet Sarah Cardoni, founder of Bucket List Blessings. Sarah, let's start out by talking about what is Bucket List Blessings? It is a nonprofit organization, and the whole goal with it is to bless those who, you know, who have had some life. They're over 45 years old, and they maybe are experiencing a little lack, might be on a fixed income or something like that, and just haven't gotten to experience much in life as the way, it could be in the way of, you know, having a vacation. It can be that on their bucket list was, a hot air balloon ride or a cruise or meeting someone famous, going to a game. You, you just don't know what's on people's bucket list, but that's what we do. We grant those for those who are going to be unable to have those things happen without a blessing. Of course, we've all heard about the Make-A-Wish Foundation and things that do great work for individuals who are terminal or for illness, but you're recognizing that it's really a blessing to be able to reach out to people who, like you said, who have worked very hard their whole lives, who have never had an opportunity, and now you're finding a way to provide that opportunity. Absolutely, yes. So tell me a little bit about how this works. You have a mission statement, you have a board, and you've been around for a while, about a year, but you're really just kind of getting things rolling. Is that right? Yes. We just became official in January of this year. And I'll just read to you our mission statement. Mm -hmm. To reflect the love of God by showing that all things truly are possible and blessings do fall. And our value statement is Matthew 19, 26. With God, all things are possible. Um, and again, just this is a little bit of a repeat. Our mission is to impact people all over our community, eventually the world, who will be living, who may be living in lack, um, unable to see those bucket list blessings or dreams come to reality. So, I believe bringing hope to a brighter future. Mm, excellent. That is really neat. Um, you shared with me before we started this interview that it was about three years ago that God dropped this in your spirit, right? Yes, he absolutely did. And, and I'm sure it was a little bit related to the business that I work for. They promote or they um, have given just millions to make a wish. Mm. And I've watched them on stage, the families that are just blessed and the lives changed and the experiences they got to do. And I just kept thinking, there's so many people that deserve those kinds of things or I, I really think everybody deserves mm -hmm. to have those experiences. And the, you know, it's great that we're able to do that through the make a wish and now we have the way to do it does you don't have to be sick to you know receive that blessing so what a neat ministry you have started you do have a board of directors yes. all faith-based board of directors yes. and uh, I'd say you have a website mm -hmm. bucketlistblessings.org yes where is a lot of information about how to get involved or how to pr nominate someone for a blessing or how to request a blessing yes um, how does somebody, first of all, let's say maybe they want to donate uh, to your cause, what would they need to do? They can find us at the bucketlessblessings.org and there is a button to donate and they can, it will give them a receipt for taxes. Um, and I would say, you know, any amount, it all adds up. And we're also on um, Facebook, people okay. can find us there. Great. Now how about requesting the blessing? Who can request it and how do they go about doing that? Well, they can go through the website, bucketlessblessings.org, and the button to request is right there. And they do, we really would like them to have had some life. So we've kind of come to a medium age of 45. So nominate the people that are 45 or older who you know, maybe haven't gotten to experience much in life or in the way of what's on their list mm -hmm. to do and, and dreams, things like that. That mom who's cared for her kids for the last 25 years and gave so much. And yes. those kids might want to say, mom deserves this. Yeah. We'd like them to have that. Yeah. yeah. How does it feel in your heart to uh, recognize requests are coming in and that you might have a chance to, to share in such a great way? The whole idea behind it is when they receive the blessing that they see God, mm -hmm. that they see that He was behind it and that there's always hope and there's all and that blessings st 
still come and you just don't know in what way, right? Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Bucket List Blessings. The website again is bucketlistblessings.org and you can learn a lot more about uh, how maybe you may be blessed, how you can bless someone else, or if you have the means, how you can donate so that you can bless others in a great way. Turning now to the topic of families. Do you have children? Were there any complications during pregnancy or since? For the Huffman family, when news came during pregnancy number three that there were some health challenges with their little baby, they turned to God and he has never let them down. Jeremiah Wright recently visited with Jared and Rachel Huffman. Hi, I'm Rachel Huffman and this is my husband, Jared Huffman. And we have three amazing kids. We have two girls, um, Gemma's almost seven. Lydia is almost six, and we have a boy, Jackson, he's three, and they're pretty much your normal rambunctious kids, but uh, Jackson also has spina bifida, and we would like to tell you his story. Well, we found out we were pregnant right away because um, we'd been trying, and I was really excited. Uh, we were going for a boy this time, and um, it was late July that we went for the ultrasound that determines gender, that you can find out gender. And we found out that we were having a boy, which we were excited. We had two girls and um, got a phone call uh, maybe a week later uh, that we needed to go for a more detailed ultrasound. They took us in a little room and they told us that he has spina bifida and didn't really kind of had heard of it, but didn't know a lot about it. They, um, they gave us the option of terminating the pregnancy, which we definitely did not want to do. Um, so they also told us about the option of repairing Jackson's back in the womb. Basically what spina bifida is, is um, a problem with the back closing correctly the skin over the spine so his spine was hanging out of his back they now can repair in the womb which is uh, very difficult to qualify for there's lots of hoops to jump through and um, it's also very risky because a lot of women deliver very early even the same week I went to Cincinnati and um, Jared came with me, had the surgery, which is where they uh, basically just expose the part of the back they need. They don't take him completely out of the womb. They just um, make an incision and then they put a patch right there on the back to close this opening. We got through the rest of the pregnancy, went really well, and uh, they have to take him C-section early because they don't want you to go into labor because that can harm, harm him and the repair that they did. So it was 34 weeks. They um, took him out C-section and um, he was the only little preemie in the NICU with rolls all over. Yeah, he's like six and a half pounds. <laughs> yes, he was he was little, but he was roly poly. So this little six pounder came to us and he um, needed a lot of help with his eating and breathing and figuring all that out. And I got to stay in the Ronald McDonald house. It was just um, right across the street from the hospital. I had to spend Thanksgiving away from the family, but I didn't miss any birthdays. And right before Christmas, I just kept praying, Lord, please let us come home, come home for Christmas. The Huffmans are an example of living the Bible verse, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Now, here's the rest of their story. It gave a lot of perspective because there was really nothing wrong with Jackson. Um, 
that would be life-threatening. So, um, it kind of brought me out of my pity party a little bit and, um, and just helped me to see that uh, God had us the whole time. God would just make a way and smooth it over and it was like he was weaving this tapestry and taking the bad and making it beautiful somehow. They saw on um, the tests that they run on his brain, the imaging, that he, um, he was going to need a shunt to regulate the flow of the spinal fluid from brain to spine. And um, so in February, we'd only been home for two months, uh, we had to go back and have brain surgery. It, it went okay. Um, Nothing went wrong, so that was good. So they cut away um, the big circle that was there from the original patch. At that time, that he decided that he was gonna learn to talk because he didn't have anything else to do. So um, he just started talking and never stopped, and he talks so well for our three-year-old. Hi. So there is a fluid packet on the spine now which is another common problem with spina bifida. And they have been monitoring it because uh, the size that it is right now is not a problem, but um, if it grows, it could put pressure on the spine and decrease his mobility. They also, along with the imaging, had him repeat a manual muscle test, which is basically um, asking him to move in different ways and see if he can, and comparing it to his baseline that they took in the hospital, comparing it to the last manual muscle test that he did, and just kind of seeing uh, where he's at as far as his mobility. And he rocked it. He did so well. The doctor was super impressed um, with his ability to move in different ways that he really should not be able to move in. The doctor also said that he's moving so well that he could easily see him walking either maybe with just one hand crutch or a cane or nothing at all. We go to an amazing church with um, prayer warriors and um, we've actually used Facebook quite a lot to send out prayer requests to um, people who might not go to our church or might not know what's going on. And um, every time he's got an appointment coming up or we might have um, a scare uh, as far as our limited ability to see what's to come, uh, we always send it out on the prayer chain and update the church. And um, they go to their knees for us in prayer and God hears them and he listens. He's just he's so faithful. I don't I don't really know how to describe it. Um, he's just showing us that he's got some really big plans for Jackson and um, I think it's cool that Jackson can reach a whole different crowd of people with um, the challenges that he faces and uh, just how he does look different. He walks with a walker. You don't see a lot of three-year-olds walking around using a walker or um, wearing braces. There's not a, a whole lot in our, at least in our small community. Um, but he's just so friendly that he will walk by any stranger and just say, hey, what's your name? Um, where's your car? because he always wants to know where your car is. He loves cars, loves trucks. It's kind of like God blessed him in, um, in other ways. It just makes up for any physical um, challenges that he'll face. Um, okay, so uh, they couldn't answer most of our questions because every kid's so different, but they did give us a lot of um, he probably won't walk, you know, he he will probably use a wheelchair, um, he might stand, 
Um, and Jackson's just kind of blown the doors off of all those. It's really transformed me. It softened my edges and um, still growing, still learning. But um, it helped me to understand better that um, I am his child and I, um, all the things that my kids do that I'm like, why are you doing that still? Are the things that he could easily look at me and say the same thing. But um, after having two typical um, births and kids, uh, having Jackson was, um, it, it took me out of the typical mundane every day, you know, read your Bible, pray, and um, it really thrust me forward towards God more um, and took me deeper and helped me to see that um, I need to stop relying so much on me, even when I don't realize I'm doing it just to get through the day and really rely on him. What a great story. If you'd like to revisit Jackson's story or any of the testimonies you just experienced, visit our website, WTLW.com. Do you know someone who has an amazing testimony to share? Email us at content at WTLW.com. We'd love to hear how God is doing amazing things through you and through those you love. Before we go, I wanted to remind you about the upcoming TV44 auction. It's scheduled for September 8th, and now is the time to get your donations ready. We're accepting items Mondays through Thursdays, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. To schedule a donation time outside of those hours, just give us a call and we'll gladly work with you. Right now, we're limited on doing pickups, but if that's your only option, let us know and we will try to make it out to your house before auction day, but we just can't make any promises right now. We're looking for some people to help us with pickups, so if you want to help us with that, that'd be great. What items do we need the most? Like new or very good quality furniture. We also really appreciate tools, mowers in good condition, and we love getting automobiles. Hey, are you looking for a really fun way to give back? We're also scheduling volunteers for auction day, two hour slots, four hour slots. We'd love to have you come and be involved with that as well. Just give me a call or email me for more information. 419-339-4444 or jbeck at wtlw.com. Again, the auction is September the 8th, but we are eagerly ready for your donations this month. Well, we close today by sharing some scripture. Colossians 3, 23 through 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. God uses people to accomplish great things. Don't ever think there's not a purpose for you. God created you for a very special reason.